guys, welcome back to another video of all things Apple Plus. We have an exciting video to show you guys today, and that is on how to get the PlayStation 1 emulator on your guys' iDevice for free. No jailbreak needed, no computer needed, no BIOS file, no searching, no ha having to download so many different applications. This will only take place within two different applications. So I want you guys to first go ahead and navigate into Safari and download Tweakbox. This is amazing third-party enterprise application. It is gonna be your main source in how to get the actual emulator onto your iDevice. And then we're gonna go into getting the actual ISO files or our actual game bin dot bin files. So once you go ahead and, go and navigate to Tweakbox, hit the install button, it'll bring you back to settings. Go ahead and hit install and make sure that you type in your passcode if you have one. Hit install and it'll navigate you back to the Safari webpage. Go ahead and jump back out and then go into your main springboard, your main homepage and launch the application like so. We'll navigate over into our app section here and in our Tweakbox apps. And as you can see, there are a ton of applications that you can download from Tweakbox. I rec highly recommend that you check out my other videos on these applications. And if there's one application that you do like that you want me to review or kind of just go over and how to install and run it, go ahead and leave a, a comment in the comment section down below and I'll tend to those as accordingly. So we're gonna download and navigate to RetroArch and we're gonna hit the install button. And then the last application that we are going to need is a is a download manager or a Safari download manager app. I like to use an application that's just called Simply Files. If you go to your app store and navigate under the search section, just type in files and you're gonna navigate down to a little bit past the second page of applications and go into its browser and file manager. And what I'll do is I'll leave the link for this application in the description below. So you will be able to just tap on it and just download it immediately. Now I've noticed that when it comes to downloading third-party applications via Tweakbox or through other applications, there may be a hiccup or there may be a stall within the application. Just go ahead and tap on the app. It may pause the application and you may have to fiddle around with it for a little bit, but just wait, hang in there. The application will download. And then if there are any instances where the application is revoked, I w please follow me on Twitter and I'll keep you guys up to date with this application. Now with RetroArch, you also will need to trust this application as a third party enterprise application. So go into your settings down to profiles and device management and find your application and go ahead and trust that app. Now, I haven't used, to be honest, I haven't used RetroArch in a minute. There has been, um, there's been a long time since I've actually played PlayStation 1 games on my iOS device. And I'm currently running an, I, an, I devi or an iPhone 8 Plus. So it's, my last device that I've been using was a 6S Plus. And PlayStation games were great on it, but it's since the jump from the 6S to the 8, now I'm, I'm really curious to see how the games look. So as you can see, there are, if you have messed around and tried out RetroArch in the past, there has been a, a huge update with the application itself. So I'm really excited to see the different improvements that they've made on the application. Now, jumping into our files app, we will need to download our ISO files, the .iso files. They're for our PlayStation 1 games. And they may be, you'll notice that the games may be, um, their extension may be a .bin or a .cue those files will be able to be read by RetroArch and be able to be played through RetroArch. So make sure that you do make a run a search for PlayStation 1 uh, ISO files and you can navigate to any Google search or any Google site and you can download your games accordingly from there. Now I am a huge Crash Bandicoot fan so I'm going to be looking for a couple of Crash Bandicoot games. One in particular I really enjoy is Crash Bash. So I'm going to go ahead and search for that game in just a moment. Now coming back, I did find the game. I was able to locate Crash Bash and it's, oh man, it's bringing back old memories of like elementary, junior high school days. It's just, uh, I'm really excited to be able to play this game and try this one out on RetroArch. So once your game downloads and finishes, you can tap on the actual file itself and it will ask you to extract. So once it does officially extract, you can navigate into the file itself and locate the .bin file. That is your game file. And then you can hit open in and it will navigate over to RetroArch. It will immediately jump over into RetroArch. Now, the issue or problem that I've had with RetroArch loading the game from here 
is that it will just leave you on this black screen. It loads up the correct emulator for you, but for whatever reason, it's just stuck on this on this black screen. So what I'll have you do is tap on the RetroArch little uh, alien icon at the top of the center of the of the item or of your phone, and then it'll bring you back to the main menu. Go ahead and load your content and find your content from the download section below, and it should show that bin file. Uh, this long. Uh, 64805090 that's your bit that's your dot bin file make sure that you find the correct emulator i was looking through the actual set of emulators to see if maybe there was a different playstation one emulator but the current emulator that you have is just is perfect so just make sure you, that you do find your game find the emulator and your game will run accordingly from there and it shouldn't have any sort of, sort of issues or problems if you do run into any issues or problems please leave a comment for me in the comment section down below and I'll help you out with that as soon as I can. Now, as you can see, the game is running perfectly. I did cut the audio uh, for this video, but the audio sounds great. And especially with headphones, it sounds amazing. The bass, the quality of the, of the music, it's really good. So make sure that you do check that out. So this immediately is bringing back a ton of old feelings, making me feel really nostalgic. But uh, as you can see, the game runs perfectly. I can select my characters, no big issue, no deal, no big problems. I did notice that there are no joysticks. There's no um, right or, or the analog sticks. So I will have to navigate back into this a little bit later on my own time and figure out if there is a setting for that. But at the moment, there's just the up, down, left, and right. And then you have your normal buttons, your L and R buttons as well too. So again, from the application itself, there is a ton of different features on here. Uh, so just make sure that if you guys do navigate into this setting that you check out the different features that RetroArch has. They've made a complete overhaul within this application. And you can really tell from a long time ago to now, maybe about two, three years ago to now, they've done a really good job on this application. So I really hope you guys did like this video, this tutorial. If you guys did, please like it up. Subscribe to all things Apple Plus. Let me know what your guys' favorite PS1 game is. And I'll be catching you guys on the next one. Peace.